I'm pretty reliant on weed, but that's because I have a lot of health problems. Is it like medically prescribed weed or you just buy it from like a dispensary recreationally? Well, <laughs> I can't really tell you how I get weed. Oh, look, I have picked up weed from the Red Robin parking lot many times, so I've been there. Hello? Hey. Hi. I What's your name? I can't believe I'm talking to you right now. My boyfriend's going to freak out. <laughs> Oh, well, well, what's, well, I can't believe I'm talking to you. I can't believe technology <laughs> has advanced far enough to get us to this point. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I can't believe technology exists. Um, what's your name? Salem. Uh, Salem? Mm hmm Like the witch stuff. Yeah, like the witch stuff and like the cat from Spring the Teenage Witch. Um, well, Salem... Do you, are you, I don't know, I feel like, I, you know, I want to ask you about witch stuff, but I feel like uh, it's, it would be hacky of me because you probably get asked <laughs> that stuff all the time. Not really, but I mean, I, I don't know why to talk about it. Mm. Well, is there a reason that it's okay if not, we can f find something, but is there a particular thing you, you wanted to talk about from, like, uh, uh, with calling in? There's so many things going on, so... You know, we could figure something out. Okay. Uh, t Sorry, tell me w one of the things that is going on. Um, I was recently in a mental hospital. <laughs> oh, okay. What's the food like yeah. in the mental hospital? Well, I have celiac, so they had to make all my food in a microwave, like just frozen meals from the grocery store. <laughs> It sounds like what you've been eating in the mental hospital is very similar to what I have just been eating in my apartment. Yeah, it was honestly, my food looked better than a lot of the other people's food in there. What was the best frozen meal you had? Um, probably just some mac and cheese. I normally have that at my house anyways. And, um... I, dude, I feel like I've talked to people about this before, but, like, is it... Are you... Are you solitary, or are there other folks uh, in the um, hospital that you talk well, to? Well, I was, I was in um, a detox and crisis center because it's one of the only like available facilities near me. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the people are on drugs or coming off of drugs, but I was um, alone because of that. But there's like hourly meetings that you have to go to. So you were alone because the only other people that they didn't mix you in with the people who are detoxing on drugs. Well, like for like the daily meetings they did, but they didn't make me stay in the room with someone that was like coming off of fentanyl. <laughs> Why was that like a danger to to you or a danger to them? It could be, and I mean, I was there because I had been having like really bad panic attacks where I thought I was dying for like like probably 20 in a couple of days. So I was like, I need, I need some help. <laughs> so they probably thought that like watching someone detox probably wouldn't be the best for my anxiety. Yeah. I feel like if you're anxious about dying, watching somebody who's like, you know, kind of, kind of dying is bad. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a lot just being in there, but I mean, I have, like family members that are addicted to drugs or have recovered from drugs. So I wasn't as shocked as I think someone else would be. Do you have TV? There was a TV in the day room. Okay. Um, did you I watch watched anything the on TV. <laughs> yeah. And I brought a lot of books, which was nice. You watched, what did you watch? The Hunger Games. Okay. I also I feel like not a good movie to watch if you're afraid of dying because it's just it's about kids dying. Well, it was it was only on Netflix for a month, and I didn't know how long it was going to be in there, so I was like, I might as well. You were like, I can't wait for my death anxiety to get better to watch this movie about the kids dying, well, so I just got to watch it now. My anxiety was about like me having like an aneurysm. And, like, ah. it was, like, fictional death, and I'd seen The Hunger Games before, so I knew I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> How long ago were you in this uh, facility? I was only in there for four days. I was supposed to be in there a week, but there was some weird stuff that happened. All right. Did you—now, in this anxiety, like, 
I don't want to, you know, but I was on the fucking Wikipedia page. Dude, I've been in some just weird Wikipedia loops lately. Yeah. And they, and it's just having anxiety and unfiltered internet connection is a horrible mix. I was on the Wikipedia page for, for aneurysms. Um, like, yeah. uh, uh, a few days ago, just randomly, when you were going, when you were anxious, were you like on the internet looking at WebMD and like just going um, into holes? I, mean, I have done that when I'm really paranoid because I get paranoid about my health a lot. Um, but I was specifically worried about aneurysms because my mom was really worried that I was having one and her aunt died from one and her mom has one and I think my great grandmother has a couple. So it was like, it's, um, possible that i could have one what did your what why was what was your mom saying to you like well she was just like i couldn't eat or like do anything for the whole time so she was just also really worried i was dying <laughs> okay uh how, well how i know you said you were in there for four days but how long ago was this oh um it was in march it was like in the middle of march okay um, what did you, what would you talk about at these meetings? Um, I mean, I feel like I didn't have as much to talk about as some of the other people. Um, because a lot of it was more like, like rehab oriented and like trying to get people to recover. Um, but I mean, I've been in AA meetings a lot as a kid, so I at least like, <laughs> I didn't feel super uncomfortable in that situation. The um, you said you've been in AA meetings a lot as a kid. Oh uh, yeah, both like, my with parents your, are with your parents. Do, is yeah. that a thing? Parents bring their kids to AA meetings. Um, I mean, if they like, if one of the parents have to work, and you really need to go to a meeting, it you know, there's normally like a little area for kids to be in. But I'm yeah. the oldest of my siblings, so I was paying attention to the meeting. Do you kind of ask you a question and like, I, it is, when you go to these, when you're at these meetings mm -hmm. and I know that it's people who are dealing with something different from you, but does any part of you, and maybe this is one of the points of group meetings and stuff, like does any mm -hmm. part of you go, okay, well at least I don't have, I'm not dealing with that, you know, when oh, you no, hear somebody I've else share. I've been addicted to drugs. I've just never gone to like rehab or meetings for it. Okay. Are you are you was, are you are you unaddicted to drugs now? I um I'm pretty reliant on weed, but that's cuz I have a lot of health problems and like chronic pain. Um yeah. but I'm not addicted to like hard drugs like I was when I was younger. Is it um uh uh, is it like medically prescribed weed or you just buy it from like a dispensary recreationally? Um, well, <laughs> I don't live in a state where weed is the most legal. It's decriminalized here and they're trying to get medical. So I'm going to get a med card. But currently, um, I can't really tell you <laughs> how I get weed. <laughs> oh, look, I have I have picked up weed from the Red Robin parking lot many times. So I've been there. It's a little, um, it's a little less legal than that. <laughs> it's a little bit less legal than that. Yeah. I mean, it. You know, I don't know. It's really, it's kind of crazy, the uh, dichotomy of like, there's, there's, I live, you know, I, I I'm in California right now, and uh, you can walk into these like fucking Apple Store type places. Where weed is completely legal and like a, a smiley salesman will walk you all around the store and like show you everything. And there's like, you know, states where people are doing that versus, you know, the Red Robin parking lot states or whatever it is that you're going to. Yeah, um, that's true. I lived in Colorado for most of my childhood, so I was used to like seeing places like that. And now I live yeah. in the South and it's, it's just weird. Because when I started smoking, I was I was like 14, and so I would like go to dispensaries with people that could get weed, and 
get it from them. So like I was pretty used to that and moving here was <laughs> kind of a shock that it's so hard to get. Okay, so you were how's your health anxiety now? Did the uh mental hospital visit help? I mean, not a hundred percent. I think it was just good to like it's right next to an ER. So I think like it made me feel safer that like, hey, if I actually am dying, like I'm directly next to a hospital. Um, and then they upped my medication and that that helped a lot. Are aneurysms genetic? Yeah, they can be hereditary. Okay. What uh like what kind of I mean fuck you don't have to tell me this if you want to, but like what kind of what kind of medication are you taking? Is it is it like just for anxiety? Yeah, it's called hydroxyzine. Um my psychiatrist wants to get me off it eventually because I'm on mood stabilizers too. Um and she said that those should probably help with my anxiety when they like start working because I have to like uh get up to the dose where where they're going to start working. So um, yeah. it's not the best medication to take for anxiety, but it's working for me. And I was addicted to benzos in the past. So. I was, I was, re- I had a, I was taking Klonopin for a little bit. Is yeah. that similar to that? Was, was I know that there's a different word for it, but I, I get lost in all the words. I think, I think Klonopin is a benzo. Um, okay. I've taken that a couple times, but I was on, I was uh, prescribed Xanax when I was. 13, which is not good to do when you have family members that are drug addicts. Sure. Drug addicts. Sure, sure. I don't really I wouldn't why. I wouldn't recommend anyone doing this, but I did have one night where I took both I was I was sick and I took both <laughs> NyQuil and Klonopin and I I yeah. think I might have slept for a whole day and I had dreams about creatures that I cannot even describe. That that sounds really scary. No, it was, I mean, it was, it, it, it fucked up the entire next day, but, um, you know, I mean, it was worth a experiment. I wouldn't recommend it. I love, I love NyQuil though. It is, it is, um, I mean, it's a great drug. I wish they have, well, they have ZZZ Quill that you can take when you're not, uh, sick. Yeah. I feel like being reliant on something like that, like nightly, though, is probably not the best. Because I think no, it's like, a terrible a bunch... idea. Yeah, I think there's a bunch of chemicals, especially in like the liquid Nyquil. Um, I have to say, I don't. I try not to look a chat, but somebody said, "Dude was on that loved Craftian combo," and that is exactly <laughs> what it was. That That's is great. like I... that is what he was on when he came up with Cthulhu was Nyquil and Klonopin. Probably. Um, I don't know if they had clone bed, but <laughs> something oh. similar. Well, well, all right. So, um, what? How's you? What's your like? How? So it got bad enough that you had to go to a mental hospital, and then it mm-hmm. got, I suppose, good enough that you left it early. Yeah, kind of. It was more like situational. Um, okay. There was a weird guy that's like my dad's age that was hitting on me, and I'm I oh. just turned, <laughs> so I thought that was really creepy, and you I just didn't want to be there. I just turned eighteen, like two months ago at that point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was like forty. <laughs> so what's your? So I mean, you're pretty young, dude. What's your like? Are you? about to go to college what's your like next uh life step i'm getting my ged um and then i want to go to college Mm -hmm. what are you what are you trying to go for i really want to be like a script writer um and eventually a director for movies and like tv but um it's a hard industry to get into it's very competitive and a lot of people don't so it's a little scary. Can I tell you something? Because I went to film school. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Where are where are you trying to? Are you like trying to? You're trying to go to film school, pretty much. Like, uh, yeah. Okay. What? Um, I don't know how much you know information you want to give out, but is there like a school in particular that you're trying to go to? Um, I'd like to go to one in the state. Um, 
And I mean, I'm not in like the best state for film school, but my yeah. dad's a veteran and um, there's this thing where you can get like free college if you're a veteran and he's giving it to his oh, kids. Word. Oh, word. So, oh, then go to college. Yeah. Yeah. No, if yeah. you could, cause I was, cause okay. What I was going to tell you was if like, don't go, like, don't go into like, don't go into fucking debt to go to film school. Cause like I have, I, I have, you know, yeah, don't go to debt to go to film school but like if no if your if your dad has like a thing with the government we can pay it then yeah i mean go crazy but do that but I do this no go ahead you, you tell me what you're gonna say i was just gonna say i think it has to be in state which is why i okay. want to go to school yeah i mean if you're in you're in the south i mean yeah it, it doesn't you can you can go anywhere. but i think if you go to film school make sure you're making st- make like if i were you I would make sure you're making stuff outside of just um, like what they um, get, what what your your coursework is, because mm-hmm. if your film school is anything like my film school, it's like they're gonna make you watch movies and write essays, which is I not it's not gonna be helpful to you in any way, shape, or form at all. Um, or like making things, yeah. Yeah, I mean, some of you, I'm sure there'll be classes where you know. I don't know. I mean, I'm cynical. There's people that I, you know, went to the same film school as me that had a great time. But, uh, you know, I mean, make sure you're like making stuff outside of class, right? Especially yeah. now, because you get, because you got fucking, you know, TikTok and YouTube, and uh, uh, I, 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 you probably have a computer that has iMovie on it and shit. Like, you have all the tools to just, to mm-hmm. just start making stuff. So I wouldn't, uh, I would, I would, I would, while doing your coursework, also just, you know, go out and film shit on your phone and computer and just make it thank you that's good advice i i try to now i feel like it definitely would be harder with like a whole course load but i'll definitely do my best but you said you try to what do you what do you make movies about um i'm not making movies i'm just like writing scripts and stuff like that um because i don't have like the best camera to film on but yeah. Also, I don't have well, anyone to help me. <laughs> well, okay. Well, you're you. I use, are you? You're holding an iPhone right now as you're talking to me, right? Yeah, it's just not the best camera. Okay. I mean, look, man. It's like people are on. I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen my show, but it looks like shit, and it didn't matter, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, if you go on TikTok, <laughs> everything is there is filmed with an iPhone. So I wouldn't. I don't let that stop you from making shit. That's true. That is true. Um. Okay, so you want to go to film school? What kind of what like like what kind of script do you write? Like funny shit, serious shit. What do you write scripts about? I think um, funny scripts are easier to do just because, like you know, it's not as serious. But I I like writing scripts based based off of some of my like mental health experiences because I think that is also fairly easy to do. Um, but yeah, sometimes I just look up prompts and do that. Have you ever seen uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? I haven't, but my mom talks about it all the time. <laughs> I haven't either, but I know it's about that. About a mental hospital? I think so. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I shouldn't have even brought it up. but It's about um, someone that's not crazy acting crazy to like be in a mental I think they're trying to hide from like the law or something, but they're hiding in a mental uh... hospital. Um, okay. yeah. Well, it was made a while ago, though, so I don't know if it's the best representation of hospitals. Well, there we go. You, well, that's the thing. Maybe you watch it and it inspires you. You're like, this guy, this guy didn't get it right, you know. And now you can go and you can make the next great American uh, 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 mental hospital movie. <laughs> Thank you. That that's gonna be my legacy. Look, what's your name again? Sa- Salem, Salem, you shall prevail against all odds. I believe in you, okay? Thank you. I really appreciate that. All right, you have a good night. You too. Call from Griffin. To accept, press. Hello? Hey, man. What's up? What's your name? Griffin. Um, I'm Griffin. in your chat. I'm Rogus Jogan. I just Rogus- muted your stream. 
Jogan. Have we ever spoke before, Rogus Jogan? Never, ever, my man. First time. Yeah, Rogus Griffin, Jogan. Griffin like Peter Griffin. You got it, bud. Ripping like Peter Griffin, Jogus Rose. <clears throat> What's up, man? Not too much, brother. How's the stream going? What's going on with you? Let's get into it. I like you already, man. Let's get into it. What, what do you want to get into? <laughs> Let's get into it, dude. I'm Buddy, imagining got... fucking John Cena on the phone. I, I love that was a that was a, that was a confident, tall guy laugh you just did. <laughs> My man, um, yo, I got, uh, like, in high school, I met this girl, right, seven, eight, ten years ago, Christ, I don't know, and, uh, buddy, we were together for five years, we went through, traveled the world, she's, uh, Canadian, I'm Canadian, you know, but, uh, <laughs> she's Vietnamese, and, man, Things went real sideways. She found some pictures in my phone. I screwed up. Trust was gone. You know what I mean? And ever since then, I've just been self-sabotaging like a like a like a big old dummy. Okay. Um you were how old were you when you when you uh fucked this up? Oh Christ. Uh loose. I lose uh, grasp on time, man. I don't know. Probably it would have been five, six years ago. So probably uh, nineteen, twenty. I'm only twenty six now. I'm a young man still. All right, all right. So you you fucked up, and then you say that you uh, ever since then, these past six years, you you say you've been self sabotaging. What does that mean? Well. Uh, I had this one girl who was super into me. It's a great, great person. She was a pastor's daughter, you know, a good, good person, volunteered, all of that, super talented. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I wasn't so good to her. I didn't give her the time of day. I didn't give her the respect she needed. She still stuck with me for like three years. And then, um, buddy, when she got pregnant, holy cow, I messed up big time. You got I said, her I'm pregnant? I'm not ready for a kid. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay. You know, let's get serious with it, man. Oh, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Keep going. Um, Yeah. And I was like, I'm not ready, like, financially or emotionally or, like, spiritually or fucking anything for a child. Right. Yeah. So I told her, I was like, I can't have a kid. I was like, if you have a kid, I can't be there for the child. I'm, I told her, I was like, I'm going to leave to a non-extradition country and we'll yeah. never talk again, which yeah. is a terrible, terrible thing to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, well, anyway, she aborted that baby, which is fucked up mm -hmm. or not, depending on your viewpoint, I guess. Well, but, okay. Was it like, well, how did the conversation go? Did she like really, like really want to have the baby? She was a religious girl, man. Her father was a pastor. Mm -hmm. Um, right. well, what were her feelings? Right. Because I mean, shit, man, like if neither of you guys are ready to have the baby, no, and we like, weren't, but I think, like, she felt like she had, like, a moral obligation or, you know. Okay. Um, do you still talk to this girl? No, no. Okay. How long ago was that? Uh, that would have been, like, three years ago. I mean, that's a, that's a tough, that's a tough situation, And then fucking, from then, then it's just all been down, man. Be boy. That's a tough situation. Um, yeah, man. People uh, keep telling me I need therapy, and I get real defensive. You know what I mean? Which is probably not a good thing either. Why do you Why do you get defensive when people tell you you need therapy? Because I don't know. I've, for me, I have an association like therapy is for people who are um, like weak or you need someone to lean on. But also, like at the same time, like you know, we're not always so strong on our own. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, look, dude, you're, you're out here. You know, you're you're like reckoning. With yourself and being like, oh, I fucked up here, I fucked up there. And, um, I mean, look, it's good to reckon with yourself, right? People go through their yeah. whole lives fucking up and they never reckon with it. So, uh, I mean, the, 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 I think I think it's good to look at yourself. I've done this before, you know, it's good to look at yourself and be like, oh, here's some character flaws that I should, um, you know, uh, uh, address. 
And uh, it, I think doing that with a therapist, it's, there's nothing about that that is uh, weak, you mm. know? Hmm. Yeah, maybe it's something I need to come to terms with, man. I don't know. It's self-reflection at the end of the day, but it is cathartic to talk about it, you know? And I'm a big fan of the channel. I'm a big fan of what you do, so. Well, thanks, man. All right, so you got all these things in your life, tough situations, things that you're not proud of, things where you're like, things where maybe you can see why you made the decisions you made, things where you're you're like, no, I was just totally acting out of, out of uh, selfishness or yeah. whatever it was. Like, like looking back yeah. on it. And being like, yeah, there's a logical reason behind it, but it was purely for like self-serving interests. Okay, well, here you are now. You're 26. You are not in jail, and you didn't die. Uh, <laughs> you're a human being on the earth with an opportunity. Uh, some could even say a obligation to you know go and become the best version of yourself that you can be, in spite of. Uh, things that you're ashamed of from your past, and I think that you should have the 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 right to go and figure out the best way for yourself to do that. So, uh, when you think about that, what 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 do you what do you think about? How do you how do you want to? I get where you're coming change. from, and I understand yeah. that. Like you hear the self reflection and everything, and the catharsis is good. But at the same time, my man, I have this whole urge, this inclination, this desire to stay oh so toxic. Like <laughs> okay, after some self reflection, right. yeah. sometimes it's appealing to get worse. You know what I mean? Okay, all right. Tell me more. Tell me about, uh, more about this. Why do you have the uh, desire to stay toxic? Christ. I don't know, man. So, like, sometimes I just do destructive things that aren't even self-destructive. They're just destructive to other people's joy and happiness. That's not good, you know? Like, I got some issues. All right. Who knows the reason? I'm going to tell you this. You should go. I, I'm, I'm down to talk. You see, you know, uh, you, you, the fact that we are having this conversation right now it, it indicates to me that you are capable of, you know, self-reflection, and so I'm. I, I, I want to talk to you about all this stuff, but you should totally go see a real therapist too. Yeah, no, you're probably right, man. Like, I would give you more in-depth answers if I could about a lot of this stuff, but I'd like the reasons for some some of my actions sometimes escape me too. You know what I mean? Okay, so, well, well, here's the thing: is like you're looking back at shit from five years ago, and it's okay to look back at yourself from five years mm. ago and be like. Yeah, I fucked up. I, you know, was not perfect, and I want to improve. I want to change. But you're telling me that 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 you're looking back at yourself from the past and you're ashamed of it, but yet you still have the desire to, as you say, stay toxic. Yeah. Okay. Tell what. Tell me about that. What is that? Maybe I'm of two minds, man. That's really what it comes down to, I guess. Right? Is deciding what path you want to walk at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Like. Buddy, I'm going to be honest. I didn't really think we were going to get this deep when I started the phone call. I didn't even think I was going to get through. <laughs> look, man. I, look, if you, uh, we can, we can, we can keep going. We can go deep if you want to. You know, uh, yeah, if you not? don't want to, we don't have to. Well, I gotta lose. Why not? Yeah. No. Honestly, man. Um, Probably it's self sabotage. Probably it's it's looking at in, in myself in the mirror and saying because I did these things in the past, I don't deserve to have good things in the future and yeah, okay, burning bridges yeah, yeah. and whatnot that uh, that probably I shouldn't be. Yeah, uh, sure. Doing things no, that so, I know so, are going to be destructive to myself to other people. You know. So you look at yourself and you're like, okay, because I've done these things in the past, um, I'm not deserving of uh, uh, a life where I improve myself, and therefore. Fuck it. Let's just keep going down the path of evil and darkness because why not kind of, beyond yeah. redemption? Yeah. So let's just I'm good let's at it. dive deep in the deep end, right? That's how you're feeling? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. But here's the... Th but, uh, just from my perspective. From my perspective. Mm -hmm. and And I would say this about... Anyone who's done anything, right, is like... Okay, if you've reached this point of self-awareness, that, that again, I can tell you have because you and me are having the fucking conversation right now. If you've reached this point mm -hmm. of self-awareness, 
you have the ability to move forward positively in your life. And why would it? I don't, I don't, I don't see why you're throwing yourself out uh, so preemptively. There's, I don't see any logical reason why you're doing that when you could decide right now, in spite of whatever transpired in the past, that you want to do the best you can moving forward and to just go go do that. What What is logically preventing you from doing that is this feeling that you don't deserve it, you know? I don't, I don't even like what is, I don't even know what that means to, to, what, to deserve it or not. It's like you're a dude on the planet Earth. Go d- d- figure figure out how you can, you know, <laughs> f- figure out how you can fucking make your life better and the lives of people around you better. I don't see why anything you've done in the past should prevent you from doing that. Yeah. No, you're not wrong, my friend. You're not wrong. You have a very good point. I should uh, I should always strive to be better in all things, right? <clears throat> yeah. So I so go ahead. In the way that I treat me, other people, and maybe I'll find some redemption in that. Who knows? But I can't uh, I can't uh, atone for my sins, my past. You know, like there there are things that uh, we can never make amends for. That like even if I want to apologize for the wrongs that I've done, for the awful things that I've done to people, those people don't want to have contact with me because of the bridges that I've burned. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, I so, so I mean, look, let's to that point. Right. Um, you, you can accept if you fuck if you fucked up in some way. You can mm-hmm. accept, like I'm not gonna reach out to this person because this person probably doesn't want to hear from me. Mm-hmm. And uh, even if I did reach out to them, they could reject my apology, and that that'd be okay. You just gotta deal with that. You know, that's okay. Mm. That that person rejecting your apology or that person not wanting to hear from you, again, doesn't, to me, negate your ability to move forward in some positive direction in your life. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. No, at the end of the day, man, it's probably... You're right, and it's something that I got to work on. Mm-hmm. It's something that I got to work on. I got I to gotta do a little bit more uh, introspection, more self-reflection, and... Find a way to, I don't know, let go of some of this sh- shit that I carry, right? Because mm-hmm. it's not doing anyone any good. Mm-hmm. It's not doing you any good. It's not doing anyone around you any good to just be like, to, 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 to beat the shit out of yourself and decide to stay toxic. I think it's a good, it's a good, it's always a, it's a good idea to reflect on your actions and reflect on your life and go, okay, here's parts where th- that just wasn't good. And here's parts where, um, I fucked up and, uh, like that's a guy that's a healthy, good thing to do. Um, but again, you said it yourself, you're a young guy moving forward. You could have, you, you got, you know, 45, 50 more years ahead of you of, of, positive action in the universe that you're just throwing away for 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 no reason. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And people yeah. have varying ideas and people have varying ideas and philosophies about these things and I respect that. So, you know, uh uh some people would ag- agree with you there's certain things that are beyond redemption. Um but I I don't I think as long as you're alive and you yeah. and you're you're self-aware to the point where you know that you can change yourself then you should, right? Yeah. Like And that doesn't that doesn't yeah. mean that that doesn't mean that anyone like owes you any kind of like you know, accepting of any apologies or anything, mm-hmm. but it does mean that Definitely not. you're 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 enti- you're entitled to fix yourself. And to pick yourself up, and to go. All right, I cannot change the past. I can. I'm, I'm going to reconcile with it, and I'm going to make an intentional decision to uh, go do better in the future. Especially with how fucking young you are. Like I said, you have 50, 45 more years of, um, you know, good life shit ahead of you. 
that you for, again that you're throwing out for no reason. Yeah, no, you, I. You, you, there's a lot to think about, man. You're 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 not wrong in any of what you're saying. It's it's easier to agree with than to actually put into practice in my life, though, right? So, I mean, I will. Uh, I'll be thinking about this for the next little while, my friend, and I will we'll see what, uh, if any progress I can make. Okay. The defeatist Good. attitude, I'm sure it doesn't help, you know? <laughs> Say that again? The defeatist? You said the defeatist attitude? The attitude, my man, the attitude. I got to think more positively about this whole thing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I guess anyway. I'm, just, I'm just lost on that. I guess I'm just, like, lost on this idea that your unhappiness with how you've acted in the past led you to some point where you're like, well, fuck it, let's just keep acting like that, you know? I guess it sets a precedent and it, it kind of shapes how you see yourself as a person. Like, if I did these things, I must be this way, you know what I mean? Right. But but but, but pe- I, think, I think people are... Um, more complicated and uh, uh, bigger than like labels, right? Yeah, the world is not so black and white, right? Because you're just like, oh, I did this, so I must be that way. Um, but I don't. I think that's just you, like boxing yourself in and labeling yourself. When but our actions are not sometimes also a true reflection of our nature, like a true yeah, reflection. No, of don't. Our... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but you can you can change your actions and therefore change your nature. Would you not agree? Mm. Yeah. No. Fair enough. So. so then having changed my actions over the past four years, roughly, and worked to better myself as a person and, you know, yeah. be a more upstanding member of society, I should yes. still be able to let go of this all, but, you know, and, and, and say, hey, you know, I've made progress and that counts for something, but that doesn't, that still doesn't erase the sins of the past. I don't know. I don't think the goal is to erase them. Right? Okay, then to come to the terms with them. Yeah, yeah, I think the goal is to come to terms with them and to figure out how to move forward positively in your life uh, despite them, you know? Because mm-hmm. why, why should it... Again, you're, just, you're, throw, you're throwing out, you know, 50 years of, of uh, you know, good, good stuff you could be doing just because you want to, you know... Wallow. Mm. Yeah, so pretty does not anybody. You're not wrong. Christ, I got some issues, eh, buddy? All right. Well, you know what? Are, are you, you are you gonna go to you should you should, you should go? You know, look, ther- look, look, man. You therapy's not a bad idea. Details. I think you should be less that. defensive about it. <laughs> I mean, I'm just a fucking gecko guy. You should talk to a pro. Yeah, yeah, no. You've convinced me. I might uh, I might benefit from hashing this all out with somebody who's got some degrees and whatnot because. Even this conversation has helped me, man. I appreciate why you do what you do, you know? Okay, good, good. What's I do have a again? question for you, though, before yeah, I go. what's up, Hitman? Why isn't the face red? You're really pushing yourself here. <laughs> I take back everything I said. You're irredeemable. No, I'm just kidding. Um, All right, brother. All right, brother. What's, your, na- what's your name, man? Griff. Griff, like Peter Griffin. Griff. Okay, well, Griff, look, good luck to you. I think I believe in you. I think you're going to figure this out. And, um, you know, keep, think about all the shit we talked about. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I'm, I'm thinking about it, man. I appreciate okay, you. Okay, cool, man. All right, man. I'll talk to you soon. Later on. Thank you, sir. Call from Andrew. Andrew. Oh, it's the therapy gecko. Let's go. What's up? How you doing? Good. How are you? Doing all right. What's happening? I I have a proposition for you. Uh, a proposition, you say? Okay. I uh, want to challenge you to a yeah. singular game of uh-huh. tic tac toe. Okay, you want to play it in our minds right now? Yep. No, no paper. Just mentally, let's let's just do it. You want to be? Right, you you want to be X's or O's? It's your it's your uh, screen. You're the, you're the host. All right, I'll be O's. Okay, it'll be O's. You want to go first or second? I want to go first. Okay. All right, I put my O. All right, uh, bottom left, I put an O. Okay, bottom left. I guess I'll put an X in the center. 
Okay. Um, upper uh, left, I put an O. Okay. I'll go left. I'll put an X. Okay. Uh, right, I put an O. Okay. I'll go bottom. I'll put an X. Okay. Uh, top, I put an O. Okay. Top right, I'll put an X. Okay. Bottom right, I put an O. Well, that was fun. What's your name again? Andrew. Andrew, is there anything in particular you called in to talk about? Nope, that was it. Um, All right. That was fun. I uh, hope you have a good night. Hope chat's doing well. Uh, I'm watching, I'll keep watching, and I'll see you guys around. Well, I, I mean, I, is that it? Is that all you want? We could do. Uh, look, we can yeah. do more. I mean, not. We don't. I don't want to do any more games of tic tac toe because my brain would explode. <laughs> but I mean, what? Who are you? That, that was that was mentally draining. It was. Uh, you know, I'm just chilling right now. Just, you know, Wednesday night. I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty pretty satisfied with this call. That's all I really. I just wanted to, you know, play around, have some fun. You know what? Talk you know to what? Jacko. You know what? I respect that, and I'm gonna let you go. Thanks. Have a good night, Lyle. See ya. You too. Take care. Wait, did I win? Call from... Peter? Peter? Hello? Hey, man. How's it going, man? It's going good. How are you? Oh, not too bad at all. Um, well, Peter, what's happening? I'm just watching your stream, hanging out, uh, playing a little bit of video games. Just got off of work. Uh, not doing much of anything, really. Is there anything particular that you called in to talk about? Uh, no, not really. Uh, kind of just hanging out and wanted to talk to somebody that uh, wasn't on a bachelorette party. What you, bachelorette party are we talking about? My uh, fiance is at a bachelor at her bachelorette party, and uh, I have no one to talk to. Oh, okay. So you wanted to call? You wanted to call me? I mean, who else am I going to call, really? Do you have any friends? I have plenty of friends, yeah. But they're mostly asleep. They all work the morning shifts and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Have you ever tried to just, like, dive into being alone, being lonely? Oh, I do that all the time. Yeah. It's great. Yeah? yeah. Well, it's I like great, being alone. You weren't, you weren't like feeling alone. it tonight, though. No. No, not not tonight. Wasn't feeling it. Okay. Why were why weren't you feeling it tonight? What was upsetting about that idea? Um, maybe it's just the lack of options. You know, having nobody else, uh, nobody else available. Mm. Just, I couldn't choose to be alone. So I almost, I, alone. I almost feel like I'm. You know, the idea of like, oh, you're a second choice. I almost feel like I'm like a second choice to yourself. Like, well, that's not necessarily true. You're the fourth. I know, but it's, I know, but it's, I'm, I know, I know, but it's a funny idea to think about. I'm the second choice to yourself. You were bored with yourself, or it's or, oh, or no, I see it's like what it's you're like saying. you didn't you didn't want to hang out with yourself, so you're like, all right, I guess I'll hang out with the gecko guy. So it's like I'm the second option because you didn't want to hang out with you. Well, I mean, I'm kind of bored of me if I'm being honest with you. Like, what what am I going to – so you can't really talk to yourself without feeling a little bit crazy, I feel like. Uh-huh. And you can't really hang out with yourself, at least I can't, without doing something. And I'm kind of tired of all the things that I was doing. Like, I'm burnt out. Well, uh- what were you doing? Well, I was playing a couple of video games, and then just none of them felt good to play. <clears throat> oh, because I'm a third option. Sure. It was you, the video games, and then me. What video games are boring you? Um, I play a lot of, like, management simulator games. So if, you, if you've ever heard of, like, RimWorld. <laughs> what is RimWorld? RimWorld is kind of like... 
Um, have you ever seen The 100, the TV show? Uh, no. Okay, well, that doesn't help. Um, RimWorld is kind of like this thing where you have these colonists that you're managing where they're trying to survive and anything could happen from, like, raids from other quote-unquote factions or just plague. That, that sounds boring. Well, at the current moment it is, yeah. Yeah, I almost didn't, I actually didn't, I tuned out when I, when you first started telling me about it, and then I tuned back in and I just heard you say the word plague. <laughs> what about, um, I mean, there's good video games out there, man. What about, like, uh, no, yeah, you're right, I see why you called me. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, see, see, there's nothing good out right now. All right, well, your wife's at a bachelorette party. Why is, wait, why is it? Her friend's bachelorette party? Her friend's getting married? No, my fiance is uh, at her bachelorette party. It's her It's her party. Oh! Oh, so you guys are getting married. Yeah, we're getting married in two months. Oh, so this is... Okay, wait a minute. So this is like your time. You know what's funny? Is you're going to get married, right? And I'm sure this is going to yeah. be great. You guys are going to have a great time. You're going to be happy that you're with somebody that you love. But I'm sure at every now and then you will miss being alone and bored in your apartment. I miss being alone even when I'm not alone, if that makes sense. That makes so like I can sense. be I can be alone and already miss being alone when I haven't even gone anywhere yet. I'm going somewhere. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I like being alone I think maybe a little too much. Ooh, what makes you say that? Well, I would almost prefer to being alone than uh, going and doing anything with really anybody. Uh, yeah, re really? Yeah. Um, I'm, 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 I'm like that too. I, 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 I'm like that too. I understand that. Hmm. Yeah. So why are you getting married? That's like the opposite of being alone. Okay, so this is where it starts to get interesting. Um, I don't like being alone when I don't have the choice of being alone. Ooh. When I don't, when I don't have a choice, it is extremely lonely, and it's not fun. But when you have the choice of going out with friends, and you're just kind of not feeling it, that's when I can really kind of relax and just be alone see it's like being being ditched by your friends is awful ditching your friends is great in in a sense like i don't i don't ditch them but you know if i have the choice of being like ah guys you know not tonight i'm not really yeah. feeling that great it it just feels better yeah yeah, I know it's you know what it's weird. It's like totally bizarre, but I I know exactly what you're talking about. But yeah, being alone because being alone because you have no options, um, feels so much lonelier than uh, being alone because you want to be alone. That feels empowering. That feels like I'm making an intentional decision to uh, be with myself right now. That feels good. Feels confident. Yeah, that, that feels like you've got your own individual personality outside of your friends. Right. It's like, who are you when you're... That's, that's, when you go to... Do you go to things... Okay, do you like to go to stuff alone? And, like, a, like would you go to, like, a party alone? Or go to a... Or do you just like to be alone? And when you're alone, do you just like to be, like, completely and utterly alone in your house? Um, kind of a mix of both. I don't like going to parties alone. I've done that a lot, and that's not fun. I do, however, like running errands alone. That's so much fun, because I can just get in the car, and listen to music, and I can just be my, kind of my truest self, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel now that you're going to be going on errands with your wife all the time? That's, that's a fun different thing, because that's, that's fun, because we can... You know, kind of have good conversations in the car or throw, you know, loud ass music on or uh, just hang out in, in silence. Silence is fine with us, but I think I'll still want to do, um, 
you know, errands alone every once in a while. And I think she under, she would understand that. She understands that because she likes being alone too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're like two cats. We like being in, in each other's space. But we don't want to talk to each other. Oh, that's the, you know, that's the best. It sounds like you found the right person for you. That's the best. When you like being alone, you find somebody else who likes being alone and you can be like two cats. That's perfect. Yeah, we yeah. can be alone together. No pun intended, saying it's perfect, but um, that was stupid. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, where is her <laughs> bachelorette party? Sorry? Where is her bachelorette party? Is it like at a, I don't know, a fucking strip club or something? No, I think they went to an Airbnb, and they're doing this whole like girls weekend or something or other. They're going to do, do you like think some... Do you think they're talking shit about you? Oh, Absolutely. If they aren't, I'd be disappointed. <laughs> what do you think they're saying about you? Uh, that's a good question. Um, honestly, my fiance is probably bragging about me to her friends because I'm like the only one of them. Like we're the only like one of her friends that is in any, any sort of good relationship. Really? Yeah. So one one of her friends is definitely um, not great with men and does not know how to pick them. How so? So, she she is a very religious person. You know, she works at a church. Um, but she likes to pick guys that are, like, super tattooed and, you know, kind of like, like that punk guy kind of kind of vibe. Not yeah, really into yeah. the whole establishment kind of thing. She I can see why. Every there's, time. A little, there's a little part of her trying to, like escape this this um in, in you know they, they, they tried to escape this establishment that she's tied herself to and that would make sense if it ever worked out right yeah right huh well well no i i, I can tell why you guys you know i can tell you guys work well together because you both like being alone it's really perfect i mean the opposite it sounds like sounds like a fucking nightmare. You know, you both cannot live without each other. Um, that sounds like it would get uh, what, uh, uh, what, the real the the fancy schmancy real therapists out there call that codependency. Yeah, I, I would I would say though that I I wouldn't know what my life would be like without her, but I do like being alone with her. Like, I like being alone with her. That's that's beautiful, man. Like being alone and not we don't we don't ever really whenever I'm alone with her, we don't like talk to each other. I'm in my other room, I'm hanging out, and I can just pop in because she likes to read a lot. So she'll just be, you know, on the couch reading. So I'll pop out of my out of my little man cave thing that I have and I'll just say, Hello or you know, fake beat her up or you know, the that thing that people do where they're like swing but not really swing. They're just kind of like poking fun at them. And then I just walk away. All right. That's well, it. um, that sound, sounds, sounds like you guys got a healthy thing going on. Well, I would hope so. So if I end this call right now, are you going to go back? Are you going to be lonely again? No, probably not. I'll probably just tune back into the stream until it's over and then go, probably go to sleep. You know, you get a cool life, man. You should be grateful. You know, people tell me that a lot. What's How do you react to that usually? Um, I don't know how to react to that because I don't feel like I have that cool of a life. I feel like my life is pretty mundane. What do you do for work? I work at Lowe's right now. I'm, do I'm in school, so. Okay. Well, what are you in school to do? Uh, aviation administration. It does sound kind of boring. Yeah, a little bit. It's a little bit boring. I would like for it but to be more aviation can, than administration. Can I just say that? Can I just say this? And I'm this is I'm saying this to myself. I it's a fucking honor to live a boring life. I mean, Jesus Christ, look at you. Oh, you're absolutely. A, you're a you're have a you, king. All right. You're have you ever heard that you, quote? There were there was some Greek quote where it, it was like. Um, it's it's like a curses to you, whoever it is. It's like, I wish that you would live an interesting life. And it was meant to, like, be an insult to whoever was 
this being was being directed at. Is it? Is there more to what you were going to say? Nope, that was it. Oh, okay. Well, I, I trail. I randomly trail off. I don't know. Well, no, you said that the, the guy the guy was, uh, was was saying to another guy, you should live an interesting life. I thought the, the guy who wasn't interest, living an interesting life would have a rebuttal. But I guess that his rebuttal was to say nothing because he was boring, and so he was being boring in protest. I guess so. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. It's an honor to, you know, I mean, look, you're a guy, you're alive, you have all your fingers and toes... You ate stuff today. You work at Lowe's. You get to go outside and stare at the sun. Um, There's uh, a lady who thinks you're cool enough to live with you. I mean, you got a great life. You're 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 a god right now. You're living in uh, uh, your life, playing video games, working at Lowe's, and occasionally looking at your wife in the face is a psychedelic masterpiece. And I hope you look at it like that every day. You, you know what? I I really needed that actually. Good, 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 good. I needed that, that was, too. That was that was lovely. Thank you for that. Hey, right, thank you, man. You have a good rest. Is there anything? What, what's your name again? Uh, Peter. You can call me Peter. 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 Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, you know, lo- lo- love your people. If you have people, love your people. And if you don't, find somebody to love. Oh, you're beautiful. Hey, Peter. Yeah. I love you, man. I love you too, Gek. You take care. All right, and, you too. Um, you know, I'm, I forgive you for me being the third choice of thing to do tonight. Well, uh, next time you'll be my first. Take care. See ya. What a guy. I don't. I stop. I stop saying I love you back to people, but sometimes the, when the moment hits, it's just blind passion talking. You know. It is. I believed everything I said. It's a psychedelic experience just being alive. I was at the. I was eating. Bre- I was. Um, I remember a moment. Ba- I used to do the show out of my mom's basement. That's where I started it. And I remember there was a moment where um, I was like, it was breakfast time, and I was just watching my stepdad like uh, read the paper while my mom ate breakfast. And I was like, you know, eating breakfast in the kitchen. And like looking at the lights and stuff. It's a psychedelic experience to be alive. It's really, it's pretty weird. It's gnarly. I don't have any deeper way to phrase it than that, but yeah, I'm a gecko. 